Hey guys, what is up? It is No Help, and welcome back to another video. So tomorrow, we actually get the release of Leagues 4. The Trailblazer Reloaded. It's going to be kind of like the Trailblazer League, but reloaded in a different kind of format. And here is all of the different relics that they've kind of revealed so far. Some of them look amazing, some of them I'm like, I don't exactly know what the point of this is, but uh, yeah, anyways, I'm going to be talking, giving you guys some tips and tricks today, and showing you a diff different regions and why you should maybe unlock those. So this is actually an Instagram post by Old School RuneScape, and it shows that they partnered with this guy right here, so shout out to you for making this, I guess. But anyways, let's just take a quick look. So basically, it'll go over different things. So... This is the, one of the starter zones that you can pick, and it's Mislin area, and it will show you everything that's in this kind of region to give you a little bit of a refresher and maybe why you would want to go there. So we're going to go through all of them quickly today. So this is Mislin, obviously, right? So it's kind of like this area right here, and it will show you that you get Edgeville, Vert Rock, Barbarian Village, Draenor Village, um, Xanaris, and Fairy Rings, the Island of Souls and fossil island that's a big one right there so the bosses they're not the best right we've got like obar obarg uh the abyssal sire not too much right but some combat content is pretty good you got a lot of slayer masters the edgeville dungeon varrock sewers um the lumbered swamp caves the stronghold of security um soul wars uh and then like fossil island wyvern so it's not the best but that there are some options there right but slayer tasks are looking pretty good abyssal demons ankus fossil island wyverns hill giants mosh giants and then some other little monsters that you can fight in here now, skilling content for the Mislin region is hardwood trees, giant seaweed, two tree patches, a hot bush, uh, one bush patch, um, Draenor rooftop agility, Varrock rooftop agility, you got some... Uh, the mushroom woodcutting, herbivore is a big one, birdhouse runs is a big one, great chinchampas, puro puro, and then a, a various amount of different uh, altars for rune crafting, and you have the champion's guild. And then the quests that will be completed for this region is Dragon Slayer, Druidic Ritual, Elemental Workshop 1, Tears of Guthics, Bone Voyage, Fairy Tales Part 2, and boosted drops are up to five times more common in this area. Uh, notable ones, Dragon Pickaxe, we got Unsired, Superior creatures dragon massage abyssal whip and abyssal dagger and a bunch of clue scrolls and then boosted activities for the mislin region is up to eight times more points slash rewards from fossil island wyverds volcanic mine and soul wars zeal now the next starter zone is actually Karamja, which is very interesting. Now bosses here, very notable ones, Fight Caves and the Inferno, Slayer Tasks, uh, Fire Giants, Greater Demons, Harpy Bug Swarms, Iron Dragons. The Slayer Tasks don't look the best here. Um, but the actual regions you get is obviously Shiloh Village, you get um, the Tazar area, Crandor, Brimhaven, and ti one i Trio. Um, but anyways, combat content, we got Duradel, huge Slayer Master there. Um, we got the Tazara creatures, the Fight Pits, the Fight Cave, Fire Cape, Inferno Cape, and all of the challenges that come along there. The skilling content for this region, fruit, one fruit tree, one spirit tree, one Calcot. Uh, Calquat Tree, Brimhaven Agility Arena, um, Brimhaven House Portal, Charter Ships, Karam, Karambuan Fishing, the Nature Altar, but don't forget, I'm wondering if you can still run through the Abyss, I'm assuming so in other regions, but anyways, Gem Mining, Teak and Mahogany Woodcutting, um, the TI Wanna Clean Up, the Infernal Eel Fishing, Tazar Pickpocketing, Tazar Gem Thieving, and Onyx Gems, very interesting. This will complete Shiloh Village plus all of the prerequisites for Shiloh Village. Not the best weapons and armor and stuff like that from this region. So I think personally I'm going to be picking Mislin. But the boost activities up to eight times more points from this. The, the cleanup favor. No thank you. Now, this is a region that you can actually pick afterwards. So, this is the Kandarin region. This one is huge, so it's one that you might want to consider unlocking. This will give you an absolute ton of areas. Piscarillus, Barbarian Outpost, Sears Village, Camelot, Catherby, Ardy, Porcazard, Gano, the Corsair Cove, Apatol, the Myths Guild, Tree Gnome Village, um, Tree Gnome Strong uh, Hold. There's a lot of stuff here. Bosses are Kraken and the Thermonuclear Smoke Devil, Slayer Tasks, Black Demons, K 
cave kraken, chaos druids, mithril dragons, ogres, smoke, devils. The combat uh, content here um, is we got Steve, the Slayer Master, the Stronghold Cave, the Waterfall Dungeon, the Ancient Cavern, the Apatol Monkeys, going to be a great place for training magic. We got Demonic Gorillas, um, the Kraken Cove, Smoke Devil Dungeon, the Poised Waste Dungeon, Barbarian Assault, Castle Wars, Chompy Bird Hunting, and piety prayer so there's a lot of combat content in this region scaling content you got a lot as well so many different farming patches you got already market thieving the already rooftop the sears rooftop this might be a really good one to unlock right barbarian fishing monk fishing fishing trawler the fishing guild the legends guild the piscatari Piscatorius hunting area that felled up hills, Reg and Champas, and the Arania altar, and obviously the house portal. I don't even know why they really included that. Um, the actual uh, combat um, or the quest that you will get is all of the prerequisites for Monkey Madness, Swang Song, and King's Ransom. Those ones will be unlocked plus all their prerequisites. So this one's actually huge. Boosted drops, obviously up to five times more common. The Miss Battle Staff, Kraken Drops, the Warp Scepter, all the stuff from Demonic Gorillas, Angler Outfit, and then just some Dragon and other equipment there. The uh, boosted activities, Castle Wars, Chompy Bird Hunting, and the Barbarian Assault. So Barbarian Assault, 8 times more points. That does sound pretty inviting. This does look like a great region to unlock. Now the next one is Asgarnia. I have a feeling a lot of people are going to unlock Asgarnia because of the actual content in here. So for the bosses, we have Giant Mole, Cerberus, Kriera, General Gardor, Commander Zilliana, and then Kirill, and then Nex. So you've got all the God Wars, right? For the Slayer tasks as well, Black Dragons, Blue Dragons, Hellhounds, Skeletal Wyverns, uh, Spiritual Creatures, and Trolls. Um, so that's interesting as well. So all the areas, you get the Troll Stronghold, White Wolf Mountain, Berthob, Taverly, um, Andrana, Remington, Void, uh, the Void Outpost, God Wars Dungeon, Goblin Village, Ice Mountain, the Dwarven Mine, Falador, and Port Serum. So many different combat content in this actual region right here. So many different dungeons. You got the Warriors Guild. You got Void. There's so many cool unlocks that you can get for combat in this region. So it is one definitely to think about depending on your play style, obviously. And for skilling content, it has an absolute ton as well. Like it's, it's weird actually like locking yourself to an area, right? Because you forget about these locations have this amazing thing that you might have planned on doing, but you might not unlock the area, right? So for the skilling content, tons and tons of farming. Um, the Falador rooftop course, Rogue's Den, the Mother Load Mine, a bunch of house portals mahogany home so there's two really good uh methods of training right there mother load mine and mahogany homes uh air mine body and law altars and the fire obelisk and then we've got crafting guild mining guild and the heroes guild and the water obelisk which is with Candorin, of course but uh yeah an absolute ton of skilling activities here um, and then for the quest completed, um, you will have um, the Merlin's Crystal and My Arms Big Adventure, plus all of the prerequisites. But look at the boosted drops. You get five times more boosted drops for some of the best items in the game. We're talking Defenders, all the boots from Cerberus. We got... Um, all the God Wars things, even Nex as well. And then we also have Whisperer's Rares with access to the desert. Now the boosted activities for this region is up to eight times more points slash awards from the Warriors Killed, Pest Control, Mahogany Homes, Motherload Mine, the Mining Guild, and the Rogue's Den Safe Cracking. This has a lot of boosted activity, so this is this might be a region you really want to consider, right? With all of its skilling, all of its boosted activities, plus access to God Wars Dungeon, this one looks like it might be worth unlocking. Next here we have the desert, which is something that I thought I might personally unlock. I don't know exactly the route I'm going to take yet. I haven't really planned it out. I kind of just want to play it by year this time and not have some crazy strategy. But anyways, the, the desert, right? There's a lot here. You got Temperus. The Calphite Queen, the Leviathan, and the Tombs of Amaskit. We got a raid in this one, right? Now for the Slayer tasks, not really the best. We got Bandits, Dust, Dust Devils, Calphites, Lizard, and Fire Fiends. Yeah, not too many Slayer uh, creatures here. But you could unlock, say, another region that has a ton of Slayer creatures and kind of balance it out. Now for the combat content, 
bandits, desert lizards, Calify lair smoke dungeon, um, a lot of just dungeons, right? You also have access to the ancient spell book with this region and that might help in a ton of scenarios. So the notable locations you'd be unlocking is Alcrid, uh, the Bedabin camp, the Bedabin the Bandit Camp, Palnavich, the Ruins of Anaka, the Temperous Cove, Sophinim, um, Necropolis, I can't read half these names, the Ruins of Alk, Narda, the Uzer Osis, the Ruins of Uzer, and the Giants Plateau. A lot of cool areas, you know, you think of the desert, you got them all right there. Uh, skilling content, right? We got a Cactus Patch, <laughs> Agility Pyramid, good for money at the start. Um, the narda statue i believe that will boost you a little bit i'm not quite sure um some how a palm of each house portal the palm of each rooftop course pyramid plunder one of the better ways to train thieving fire altar could be a great way to train rune crafting the desert uh hunting area the sandstone and granite mining great way to train mining there um, the, uh, the herb lore service, this is one I never really even considered, right? So without access to the desert, you're going to have to clean all that shit yourself, put it in the vial yourself. Hmm. Didn't think of that one. Sorcerer's garden, mage training arena, the giant's foundry and the guardians of the rift. So this one has a lot of skilling content, right? Giant's foundry. That's 99 smithing guardians of the rift. That's 99 rune crafting, right? So it is definitely one to consider, especially it also has pyramid plunder. Let's take a look at the completed quests. Desert Treasure 2 plus all of the prerequisites for Desert Treasure 2. Amazing. You got the Leviathan drops, Dust Devil drops, Calify Queen, the Tombs of a Mask. And imagine that with five times more common drops. Also the Guardians of the Rift, Temperus, and the Pharaoh Scepter. To be honest, this is one that I might unlock just because there's so much in here that is just so valuable and means so much. The boosted activities up to eight times more points slash awards, the Giant's Foundry reputation, the Guardians of the Rift Abyssal Pearls. Imagine just searching, getting eight times more pearls. You could finish that shit in a few hours. And the Mage Training Arena, that could be actually pretty helpful too for getting gear maybe to take on the Tombs of a Masket. Next, we have the Fremenic Province. The bosses for this area is the Dagonoth Kings, Vorkath, and the Phantom Muzba. So three amazing bosses right there. Slayer Tusks, Basilisks, Cockatrice, Dagonoths, Jellies, Karasks, and Tureths. Uh, not the best, but not the worst either. The notable unlocks is pretty crazy for this. Keldegram, you got the Mountain Camp, Relica, Pirate's Cove, the Waterbirth Island, Iceberg, Lunar Island, uh, Nezinot, Miscellanea, you got the Island of Stone, Weiss, and a few other ones, right? For the combat content here, we've got the Lighthouse Basement, oh god, Basilisk Knights, Helm of Nezinot, and Face Guard, the Lunar Spellbook, if you're more into, say, skilling or wanting the Lunar Spellbook for whatever reason, Miscellanea, the Fremenic Slayer Dungeon, the Waterbirth island dungeon rock crabs um adamant and rune dragons the ava's assembler wow there's there's these weird like items that are i forget about right that they're actually like to this region relica right here and it's like you can't imagine playing the game without the ava's assembler but i guess you will have to you can't be like a ranged based person if you don't have this you know it's, it's weird it's really gonna be a lot of fun the skilling content here, a decent amount of uh, farming patches. We got the Blast Furnace, the Kingdom Management. I was wondering if that was going to be working here. Um, Keldegrim sh uh, Stone Mason Shop, player-owned house upgrades. Oh, four player-owned house upgrades. That's another one, right? You can't get your... That's insane. That's... I never... Oh, that's weird. Um, the Relica Hunting Area, the Relica Rooftop Course, the Penguin Agility Course, the Salt Mine... Jacito mine, the ast uh, astral altar, and the lunar spell book. The completed quests from this one um, will be all the prerequisite quests plus Dragon Slayer 2, Horror from the Deep Mountain Daughter, and Secrets of the North. This does not complete um, Desert Treasure 1. Okay. Um,. I don't know even know why it said that. But anyways, the boosted drops up to five times more common. We got the Vorkath rares, the Basilisk Jaw, the Phantom Muzpa, the Leaf Bladed Weaponry, the Brian Saber, the, all of everything from the Dagnoth Kings, which can be awesome, very important, Adamant and Rune Dragons, and also the Duke rares. Now, the boosted activities, 
are none for this region, so that's something to consider. We've got the Swamp Letic Zone, Mauritania. We got bosses there, Barrows Brothers, Grotesque Guardians, The Nightmare, and the Theater of Blood. Another raid with this one. Slayer Tasks are uh, Banshees, Bloodvilles, Cave Horrors, Gargoyles, Nacreals, and Vampires. The combat content is an absolute ton. I'll go over the notable ones, Barrows. We got the Slayer Tower, The Nightmare, Theater of Blood um jungle and cave horrors black mask and slayer helmet so you won't get a slayer helmet without this region and temple trekking don't forget about that that might be very very good for some supplies now for the notable locations you have access to one the slayer tower all of canifis all of Mor morton bird to rot uh myridage dark mare um sleep verse second or uh, what i can't even pronounce that port phasmatis dragon tooth isle mostly harmless and harmony island farming patch there now for the um, scaling content, a little bit for farming, right? We got the Canifis Rooptop Course, the Dailed Essence Mine, the Ecto Functus um, Prayer Training Method, Swamp Lizard Hunting, the True Blood Altar, the Hallowed Sepulchre, Vire Pickpocketing, the Werewolf Agility Course, the Werewolf Skull Ball, and Trouble Brewing. Now for the completed quests, you will get access to all the prerequisites and the darkness of Hallowell and the Great Brain Robbery, boost drops, which are five times more common, all of the Barrows rares. This will be so fun if you choose this region, you'll just be getting so many drops from Barrows, like probably your first day. Um, you got all the Theater of Blood drops, the Nightmare, the Grotesque Guardians, Shades of Morton, Blood Shards, the Ring of Endurance, and Black Mask. So this might be a really quick way to jump onto that 99 Slayer grind if you want to get your uh, Slayer Helmet. Now boosted activities is from Trouble Brewing. Nobody cares. Now next we've got Tarowin, or the Priftonous area, however you want to say it. Bosses are Zalcano, the Gauntlet, and Zalra, which is one of my favorite bosses in the game. All three of those are just some of my favorite. Slayer tasks, we got Bloodvilles, Dark Beasts, Elves, Karasks, Nacreals, and Water Fiends, so very, very good for Slayer. Combat content is the Irworth, Irworth Dungeon, the Mourner Tunnels, Priftinous Elves, the Irworth Camp, the Elves from Letia, the Toxic Blowpipe, Enhanced Crystal Weapons, and the the rabbit no one cares about that and the notable locations are you know zalrandra let the uh, the camps all the camps the priftiness and the underground pass no one wants to go down there i don't think unless there's something hidden there skilling content a little bit of farming obviously like all of them the death altar divine potions the priftiness agility course the Priftinous Crystal Implings, um, we got the Red Chinchampas little area there, the Trahan Mine, the Priftinous House Portal, the Priftinous Hard Trees, and Sacred Eel Fishing. Also, um, you can get the Crystal Pickaxe, the Crystal Axe, and the Crystal Harpoon. If you have either the Desert, Pramanic, it's, it's gonna depend. And then the completed quests is the Song of the Elves plus all of the prerequisites. And the boosted drops. The Zalra drops, we got the Dark Bow, the Volcanoes drops, the Enhanced Crystals, um, Leaf Bladed Weapons, Mist Battle Staff, and the Dragonstone Armor. Boosted activities are none for this region. The next one is the Wilderness, and I'm going to be very curious to see how many people choose this one, because this might be a very interesting way to build your account. So for the bosses, it's an absolute freaking ton. If you're into the wilderness, you might want to choose this, If especially if you're into the wilderness bossing, but I personally probably won't. But anyways, Slayer tasks, we got bears, nacreals, dust devils, lava, dragons, revenants, and skeletons. I'm not going to list off all of the wilderness bosses. They're all just shown in the picture right there, and you kind of get the point. The combat content, um, Kind of the same thing, really. Revenants, the Void Waker, you got the Wilderness Boss Layers, Lava Dragons, Spirit Shields, um, the Deep Wilderness Dungeon, the Wilderness God Wars Dungeon, uh, Mage, Mage uh, Arena 1 and 2, and the Imbued God Capes, and other players. <laughs> very, very true, right? Imagine you get like all a bunch of Bandos gear or something, you come to Wilderness and you just die. This is why I'm probably not going to pick it. We get the Pirate's Hideout, the Mage Arena, the Rose Castle, the Fountain of Rune, Lava Dragon Isle. Uh, Isle, Ferox Enclave, the Dark Warrior's Fortress, the Bandit Camp, and the Chaos Temple. Skilling content for the Wilderness, Abyss Runecrafting. I didn't even think of that. That might be a huge one if you want runecrafting. 
um, the Fountain of Rune, the Wilderness Resource Area, the Wilderness Agility Course, the Chaos Altar, um, the Chaos Altar for Prayer, another one that I didn't think of, um, Air and Earth Obelisk, Black Chinchampas, Black Salamanders, and Dark Crab Fishing. Depending on how many people actually choose the Wilderness, it might be one that is good, right? Because you got, I, there's so many things you forget, right? Like the Abyss Rune Crafting, and then the Way of You Training Prayer um it could be interesting so the completed quests are all of the prerequisites for enter the abyss which i think is none not a good quest list there boosted drops up to five times more common is insane though from all of the wilderness things so you can easily get like the dragon pickaxe dragon boots dust uh anything from dust devils pretty much anything from the wilderness five times more common that's gonna be awesome i, I can see so many people doing like corp and stuff like that getting the sigils and the boosted activities again is none next we have a region that i personally think i'm going to pick great Karend. The reason is, is because it is absolutely freaking massive and there is so much content to do. You got Winter Todd, you have the Alchemical Hydra, Sarachnus, Skatizo, Hespori, the Mimic, and another raid, the Chambers of Zarek. Slayer Tasks not looking so good, Red Dragons, Lizardmen, Worms, Drakes, and Hydras. But... Eh, it is what it is, right? So the combat content, the Chambers of Zarek, you get Rigor and Augury, um, the Archaeus Spellbook, which has access to Thralls, the Konar Slayer Master, the Brimstone Chest, don't forget about that, the Mount Corum Dungeon, the Catacombs of Karend, the Lizardman Shamans, the Forthos Dungeon, the Chasm of Fire, and the Giant's Den. You can get access to the Dragon Hunter Lands, Ferocious Gloves, the Arc Light, the Kodite Wand, and uh, the Ring. But you obviously have to have access to other regions as well. The notable locations is pretty much all of Karend, right? I'm not going to read all of that out, but all of Karend. It's a huge area. Now, the skilling content is going to be insane for this region. A lot of the patches for farming, lots and lots of them. You also have the farming guild and the tithe farm, which I, I, it's kind of like the way I play. I love farming and I like Slayer. Those are my two favorite skills in the game. So this is the definitely definitely the region for those skills. Then you have Woodcutting Guild, Redwood Trees, the Archaeus Library, the Hosidius House Portal, the Karend Hunter Area, Lake Mulch, Anglerfish, Soul and Blood Altar uh, for rune crafting, and the Blast Mine. The quests not looking so hot. X marks the spot plus all the prerequisites which I believe is absolutely nothing. The boosted drops, though, absolutely insane. All of the drops from Alchemical Hydra, all of the drops from the Brimstone Chest, the Seracnus Cudgel, the Winter Todd Rares, I might just fucking rush 99 fire making, um, the Chambers of Zarek, the Bottomless Compost Bucket, um, um, Vardos, if you have the Desert, Dragon Warhammer, and Dust Devils. Now, boosted activities, this is where this becomes insane. Eight times more points and rewards for the Karen favor, the Tithe Farm points. Think about that for a second. And then Aerial Fishing and Mulch Pearls. So, personally, I think I'm going to be unlocking Great Karen. I haven't fully decided yet, but looks like a great re uh, region for the game, that, or the way I play the game anyways. Now, I hope this has maybe given you a little bit of insight on what to expect from the leagues and which regions you maybe want to choose. The whole point of the leagues is to kind of just sit back and relax, take a break from the main game for a month or even a week. You don't have to play it the whole time. You don't have to go for that Dragon Cup. It's kind of just to like take a little bit of a break from the other game and have fun with RuneScape in a way that you've never been able to before, right? Now for all of the relics, that's going to come later. I'm not exactly sure how all, that, all that's going to work, if you're going to have to pick certain ones, if they have cooldowns, whatever it is. The way I played the last league, right, is I kind of just played the game game like I would play a regular account but with the the boosted experience now the last league I played leagues three it didn't have any um like you didn't have to choose regions you had the whole game unlocked to you right but this one's going to be very interesting and I know there's so many people and so many videos out there that are trying to show you the optimal method for you to choose and like get the most points and whatever it might be possible and sure that might be good to follow if you want a dragon cup but at the end of the day, the way I recommend that you pick them out is your play style, right? Now, for me, I love skilling and I like going for like levels and maxing the account. 
I'm not so much in it for the points. Now, the points are nice. Obviously, it's cool to get, say, an adamant rune or dragon cup, whatever it is. But the points to me don't matter as much. I think you should try and have the most fun you can with the game. Now, to me, that's skilling and trading Slayer, right? So I think, like, the way I look at it is the regions that make most sense to me for what I want to do, right? If you're super into PVM, choose something like the area where you get god wars dungeon and whatever right if you're into pking in the wilderness choose the wilderness right it's all up to you and you know the starter zone i'm not sure if you can choose that as your second maybe too right but uh if you choose karamja as your starter zone then you can get access to the fire cape and jad and take that on right it doesn't really it's it's however you really want to play the game i want to try and get as much of the map as i possibly can with the way that i'm gonna choose it and the other skills the other whatever it is i'm gonna try and squeeze in here and there but make the most of it have the most fun with the game as i possibly can and it's gonna be so cool to lock myself to just like three regions of the game or three or four regions of the game for like a month or two months whatever it is now as for my iron man account right here i'm gonna be fishing car Karambwans the entire time. So I'm just getting some uh, Karambwanjis right now because we're going to need an awful lot of those. We have zero in the bank right now. So I'm going to try and get like 50 to 100,000 depending on how active I am going to be playing the leagues. But uh, I'm actually so excited. It's going to be uh, out tomorrow. So let's just uh, hop right into it. I don't have as much time as I did on the last league. So I'm not going to probably be maxing. I'm not going to be getting Rune or Dragon Cup. I'm just going to be having fun making progress videos the whole time from like a regular average player's perspective that can't play 12 hours a day. So it will be very interesting and a lot of fun. But that will probably be most of the content on the channel for the next month unless i end up burning out or something but yeah i'm very excited but anyways thank you guys so much for watching the video today and i will catch you in the next video see ya later